The City of Las Cruces has a new economic development director who will oversee the city's efforts to increase economic opportunities in our community. We'll meet the new director who will reveal her strategies for economic development in this edition of ASTA. Hello and welcome, I'm Delvi Hill. Our guest is Dr. Griselda Martinez, who's the city's new economic development director, only the second person to hold that position. Griselda, congratulations and thank you for joining us. Thank you, Adele. Little bit of background, before becoming the new director, you served as deputy director and then interim director, which means you bring a lot of experience to the position. Tell us a little bit more about your background. Sure, um, as you said, I've been here in the city for a while, uh, over two years. And that's very exciting. Uh, in addition to that, I, I've been in the economic development world for almost 10 years um, and working with entrepreneurs and business owners and startups, um, working with technology-based companies, uh, helping them grow their own business. Um, I, I, I did that at the Arrowhead Center here in MSU. Mm -hmm. And then previous to that, I, I have also experience in the binational economy in El Paso, Juarez, um, also working in the private sector. So I'm excited to now be in this role and, and transfer my knowledge to the benefit of this community. Well, and you have been, like you say, for about two and a half years now. And mm -hmm. so uh, we're, we're looking forward to you in your new role because this department, the Economic Development Department, is fairly new to the city organization, mm -hmm. which means city council and the administration know how important economic development is to our community. Correct. So having said that, what is your top priority as the new director? Yes, um, we have been already setting some direction for the last eight or nine months uh, in my interim position, but right now we're going full force with a number of uh, initiatives. One of them is we want to establish a micro lending program with a partner uh, with a CDFI, a community development finance uh, institution that will allow um, small businesses to access um, loans that are not in the traditional lending world. So we are about to put that RFP out for um, partners to respond. And we're very excited about that one because that would allow us to fill in an important financing um, gap that is in existence right now in, in our community. So that's one. Um, we, we're working very closely to um, evaluate the needs from our business community and how we can be the hub for resources working with all of our partners here in the community such as West and Small Business Development um, Center and Arrowhead Center and non-for-profit organizations that also provide support for um, businesses uh, such as Community Action Agency uh, and the like to make sure that everybody is connected and that the resources are, are being connected to those in need. Um, another top priority is to continue the work related to workforce development efforts, continue our um, partnership with workforce connections and workforce solutions, uh, continue our work with the Bridge of Southern New Mexico, Doña Ana Community College, and see how, do, how we align the resources to the needs and prioritize where where the uh, if there is a need for a certification uh, to um, to serve a business and then to provide an opportunity for a job seeker, uh, we're really working hard to continue to align those visions as well. Wow, that's wonderful. So you're not just focusing on starting new businesses; you're putting a lot of resources into developing existing ones Correct. and making sure that we're matching the workforce to the needs of those businesses. Correct. Um, we. Um, we're focusing on not just um, job uh, relocation, which is one of our strategies, but also job creation from people in our community and for us to connect them to the support platform that is needed and crucial when a business starts. And then for those that are already in our community, we're thankful for them to be here and we want to make sure that we help them uh, grow is if that is their decision. So financing, 
uh, workforce, um, workshops that they may benefit from learning um, to increase their efficiencies, uh, lower cost, increase um, their level of profit. So we're going to be doing a lot of that in the next uh, few months to determine where the top priorities are from the business community and then establish either um, programs internally or partnering with partner, uh, with entities already in existence in our community. Wonderful. And in a, in a previous podcast, we spoke to Debbie Moore, who's mm -hmm. president and CEO of the Greater Las Cruces yeah. Chamber. And she made mention about the close relationship between mm -hmm. your department and the chamber and how you two yep. are working hand in hand to further develop uh, the economy here in Las Cruces. Correct. Um, partners in our community are definitely the chambers, the greater, the, the green and the Hispanic. And so we we are um, right now we are in conversations on how we establish programs that are um, systematic uh, support systems for for the business community so um, the chamber have their role and we're defining where our perfect spot is to support the, the continuous growth of our business community. Okay, terrific. Yeah. So you oversee several other sections, if you will, within the Economic mm -hmm. Development Department. One of them is Visit Las Cruces, right. otherwise known as the Convention and Visitors Bureau. Mm -hmm. And they're responsible for trying to put heads in beds, right, and bring yeah. outside dollars into our community. Yeah, within Visit Las Cruces, we're super excited. Um, we have a brand new position, which is this uh, outdoor recreation sales manager. And so we are going to be um, doing a lot of uh, resource assessment um, for the outdoor recreation industry and to really work on placing Las Cruces as a destination, leveraging upon all the outdoor opportunities that we have here. Um, so we're very excited about that one. And then um, so that's from the business, uh, the Visit Las Cruces component, but from the business uh, development component, we're going to be working with the community members who may already have a business that serve um, outdoor activities or who may be in, people who may be interested in creating a new business to serve the, the higher demand. Uh, and so to match the supply with the demand and all within the economic development department. So we're very excited about that. Great. Um, and then continue with our, all of our uh, efforts to continue to brand Las Cruces as a destination. So we're, we're excited. Okay, terrific. So uh, one of the other areas you oversee is the West Mesa Industrial Park, mm -hmm. which is on the way to Deming, just across from Las Cruces International Airport. Mm -hmm. And I've always consider that kind of like a diamond in the rough. Yes. Something you're actively marketing. Uh, tell us about the uh, industrial center and what opportunities it affords people. Yeah, um, the industrial park was created in the 90s and it, was, it is right across from the Las Cruces airport. Uh, and the purpose of that was to leverage upon each other um, to grow the industrial scene in Las Cruces. And so we're, we're reviving that vision and we're working really hard to market that area. And one of the big components to that, for instance, is the Opportunity Zone, which is um, a program that allows for capital gains from investors to be invested in a fund. And then that fund to be used uh, in projects in those opportunity zones. So right. the industrial park is one of, uh, of those locations. The airport is another one. Um, we're currently going through a, an analysis, a very comprehensive analysis of what the targeted industries should be, um, the top priorities for our department to market the, the two assets, the, the airport and the industrial park. Um, and so we're, once we've finalized that assessment, then we're going to go through a very comprehensive marketing plan um, and also evaluate the opportunities for additional type of incentive programs that we could add to our portfolio. Right now we have the Local e Economic Development Act, which allow us to do um, in, um, an incentive package to businesses who have um, investment, increase the GRT for our community and, cre and or create jobs. So uh, we're, we're enhancing our portfolio, but definitely we need to make sure that we are targeted in our efforts to, to be able to recruit companies to, um, from outside the community or to help 
companies in our community relocate to to the industrial park. Okay, and and so when you talk about you know it's not just job creation but mm -hmm. better paying jobs, right? Correct. That's one of the priorities that, that you've said in the past. Correct. Bear, um, we want to make sure that we create opportunities that. We, that are sustainable, and um, one of my personal goals is to increase household uh, median income. Okay. So that's a big goal, but um, I believe that we have the assets and the mechanisms to help our community get there. So definitely, uh, we're working with our partners. One of them is the Mesilla Valley Economic Development Alliance, mm -hmm. and we're working closely with them to make sure that we're we're um, going after the opportunities that we want for our community and not necessarily um, the low paying jobs that, that, um, that may be available. So we wanna, we wanna do big changes and, and hopefully we'll, we'll start seeing the success soon within the next 12 months. And, and a big advantage to this community is that we have a university, right? We have right. NMSU, you mentioned Arrowhead, mm -hmm. where you spent some mm -hmm. time, uh, Doniana Community College. So those entities would help um, bring in a workforce that's higher, Correct. that a higher education, which could lead to higher paying jobs. Right, uh, I'll give you an example. We were having a, a workshop and a local company that um, is in the logistics industry, they, they own a, a trucking company. They are in need of uh, people who drive their trucks and they they cannot find the, the right employees. So, um, I told I was in a different meeting, and I told the Doñana Community College Career um, Center about it. And so they're working now together to make sure that there is a pipeline for this company to access the the right set, um, the right people for their for the job. And a trucking uh, a truck driver makes over a hundred thousand dollars a year. So definitely, those are the type of jobs that we want for our community. Great. So going back to the airport, so mm -hmm. like you said, right across from the West Mesa Industrial mm -hmm. Park is Las Cruces International Airport. And yep. we're, we're fortunate as a community that we have an airport yep. uh, and an international airport. Mm -hmm. So w what kind of um, ideas do you have for developing activity out there? Yeah, for the airport, we have a lot of great opportunities. Um, in addition to just the, the name, uh, we have three different runways, which is very seldom for any airport to have because that allows us to have many more options for landing and take off and so that's definitely in the aviation world a, a plus. Uh, in addition to that we have um, one of our tenants is a physical science lab uh, who that is part of the university and what they do is they test um, drones and and so we are working very closely also with PSL uh, physical science lab to determine what opportunities we have to expand on their current operation there um, to bring more testing but also to plant the seed of, of companies coming to do testing for drones to make Las Cruces their home and so that's that's one area um, that is very exciting mm -hmm. um, in addition to that we're looking to explore commercial service um, flight service at the airport and so um, we're evaluating where the demand is, where the opportunity is. And so we have within our strategic plan that we will have commercial flights from Las Cruces International Airport by 2022. So we're working uh, to explore those opportunities. In, the, in general projects that we have going on right now at the airport uh, includes a new fence around the whole airport which is a huge uh, benefit for the, for the airport because it will increase safety um, and security as well. So that, that will be an additional asset to potential companies relocating there and, and tenants at the airport in general. Um, we're also doing a whole uh, reconstruction of one of the aprons and we just finished a uh, rehabilitation project for the street side to improve the asphalt. So. Uh, the next step on the street side will also be landscaping, and so a lot of beautification projects as well. Nice, and I know you touched about uh, commercial air service, and that's something people have always talked about. Mm -hmm. You know, El Paso being so close, I guess it, it kind of takes away from 
here in Las Cruces, they say, well, it's just a half hour drive. But uh, I remember back in the days when Mesa Air used to fly out of here mm -hmm. and it was very popular and I remember using it. So hopefully you're, you'll meet with some su success in getting another carrier over here. Yeah, we're, we're working on determining uh, the level of demand from our community, but also within the 50 miles around Las Cruces that mm -hmm. are, those are communities that don't have commercial services. And so are they willing to come to Las Cruces to take uh, a plane? But also we're also evaluating what would be the most beneficial routes that could uh, support that demand. So a lot of people want Albuquerque, I've heard Los Angeles, Denver, Dallas. So we, we need to find the sweet spot that we're capturing the opportunity and also um, understanding that the El Paso airport serves a different market as well. Right. Well, it, it, that's going to be good news to a lot of people that, mm -hmm. you're, that you're looking into it with that much depth and optimism. And so right. hopefully here fairly soon we can get a carrier. More to come on that one. Okay, terrific. And then lastly, um, downtown Las Cruces and I always mm -hmm. like talking about downtown mm -hmm. because it's such a beautiful spot now and the, yeah. and the whole revitalization effort has taken off and it seems to be paying off as well. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. the, the work at the downtown area started five years plus and so now we're seeing seeing the results of, of all the hard work that took place starting then. But right now, uh, for those community members who are looking for a venue to have their events, please remember to talk to us because the downtown plaza, it's technically a park and we can rent it out for community events. So that is our next um, effort to bring awareness to the community that is their plaza and they can use it for events if they desire to do that. Um, we have a lot of um, projects going on. Right now we're working with businesses in the downtown area to uh, paint their their front um, oh, that's right. and and that is it's really exciting uh, we're working with downtown uh, Las Cruces uh, partners and they are working closely with the businesses to connect them to resources but also to create programs that would eventually translate into more profits to those businesses and more fun activities for the community in general. And so uh, coming up, we have the Christmas tree lighting. Yes. Uh, and that is a big event for our community. And we're excited to, to be part of that. Uh, that's an effort um, coming from Visilas Cruces within our department. And so, and that keeps getting bigger every year. More right. and more people are hearing about it. And we were out at the plaza not too long ago mm -hmm. filming a different program. And you've got all the trees up. The way it's decorated is yep. very inviting. And so, uh, we, you're right. We encourage the whole community to yep. come out on. And that's going to be on Saturday, December seventh. Correct. Starting just about sundown, right? Correct. It's starting at six, and then um, we're going to have. About every department in the in the city will have a booth, and so we'll have activities for the families. We'll have food, we'll have crafts, and so it's it's definitely a fun uh, event for the community and a good place to start the holiday season. Right, and then just a reminder to everybody. There's now free Wi-Fi downtown, which is something yeah. that we've been uh, wanting to do for a while now. That That's another great thing that, that just launched maybe a couple of months ago. And mm -hmm. so we have Wi-Fi, it's high speed, and, and it's another asset that we can um, promote for people to come to our plaza. So our plaza, the plaza for the whole community. Yes, it is. The heart of Las Cruces, as Correct. they call it. Well, Dr. Griselda Martinez, the new head of the Economic Development Department, thank you very much for sharing your time with us and thank telling you. us about the plans for the future and how we can um, develop more of the economic base here in our community. We're and excited. good luck to you. Congratulations again. Thank you, you too. All right.